Five. Two hours after the asteroid impact, the entire planet is covered in dust and smoke. Fires rage across the western hemisphere. One of the few remaining Quetzalcoatlus, a flying pterosaur as big as a giraffe, is struggling to get airborne. Once a lush valley is now an inferno. Animals that fly can escape the flames, but there are few places to land and almost nothing to eat. A food chain once rich enough to support giants now lacks its basic component, plants. Twelve thousand kilometers away in Mongolia, the temperatures are finally dropping. A handful of animals remain safely holed up in their cave. It seems the worst is over. The ravenous Sir Ornithoidids can't resist the sight of an easy meal. Soon, the braver Coronasaurus follow, making their way back towards the watering hole. One stays near the protection of the cave. As the ejecta begins to clear, the parting clouds reveal the shift in temperature is throwing Earth's weather systems into turmoil. And in Mongolia, Powerful winds are gathering billions of tons of dust and sand. A dust storm forms as hot air rises. Thermal imaging shows how it builds, whipping up loose particles of sand and dust and gaining energy from the heat of the sand itself. The 150 degree temperatures that baked Mongolia turn a common weather phenomenon into a superstorm. As it hits, the Saronithoidids are small enough to crouch for cover. But the Coronasaurus are out in the open. sand blasts their bodies. The harder they struggle, and the deeper they gasp for oxygen, the more sand fills their lungs. Until finally they can't breathe. Superstorm engulfs much of the continent. It's hours before the winds die down. The last Coronasaurus, protected once again by the cave, heads to the watering hole on her own. Way there, she finds she's the last of the herd. But she's not the last remaining dinosaur in the neighborhood. Close to a Coronasaurus corpse, the Saronithoidids were sheltered from the worst of the storm. But the sand has swallowed their meal. Inside, 
instinct drives them back to their prime hunting spot, the watering hole, where the last surviving Coronosaurus is taking in the much needed fluid. She's lucky to be alive, but too exhausted to run from any new sign of danger. And danger has arrived. The Sauronophoides are desperate for food, but they're weak from hunger and the buffeting of the sandstorm. Only one has the confidence to attack. Triceratops are a little too much to take on. 